Canada will need more and more electricity in the years ahead, simply because our population keeps going up and up and up. But not only that, we're seeing Canadians use more and more technologies that require a lot of electricity, such as electric cars. So where will the power come from? Well, today we're going to be chatting about nuclear power, because a lot of people are talking about this potentially being a solution. And today I'm pleased to chat with Dr. Chris Kiefer. He's a co-founder of Canadians for Nuclear Energy. Uh, Dr. Kiefer, thanks for taking a few minutes to chat today. It's my pleasure, Colin. Thanks for having me on. So I, I think you've actually got a pretty interesting story. You're a medical doctor by trade, but you founded a group, Canadians for Nuclear Energy. Could you tell us a little bit about your story, why you decided to do that, and then also what your organization does? Yeah, absolutely. So I have a son who's almost five years old. Um, and at around the time of his birth, I started thinking seriously about climate change. You know, your time horizons uh, start to extend a little further into the future um, when you have a child. Um, and I started reading a lot about climate change and becoming quite concerned, maybe even a bit doomy. Um, so I started to focus on solutions. Um, and I noticed that right here in my backyard in Ontario, uh, we actually have one of the world's lowest carbon grids. And I asked myself why and started looking at the composition of that grid. And we are 60% nuclear powered here in Ontario. You know, across the country, we don't do too badly because we have a lot of hydroelectricity in this great big country of ours. So places like Quebec, BC, Manitoba have very low emissions. Uh, but Ontario, once we kind of uh, built out beyond Niagara Falls and our population grew, we started to build a lot of coal plants. And very luckily, um, in the 70s, uh, nuclear energy came along and we created a world class reactor design in the can do and started building. So um, it's a very misunderstood uh, technology. There's a lot of misrepresentation out there. Um, and my group and I think that um, it's a vital technology for Canada's response to the challenges of climate change. In a few minutes, I want to really dig into this issue, asking about how we mitigate the waste uh, and other risks with nuclear power, what we, what you think we should do in the future. But uh, I want to talk about the overview, sort of if, if you could tell us just very briefly how it is that these nuclear power plants work, uh, but then also where they're located in Canada, how long they've been here, those types of things for those who aren't familiar sure. with this. Yeah, so it all boils down to the world's most famous equation, which is E equals MC squared. That's uh, Einstein's equation. And basically what it's getting at is that um, energy and mass are, are transferable. So what nuclear energy does, we have very heavy atoms called uranium. When they split, a tiny amount of that mass is converted into energy. And that C in the equation is the speed of light, and it's the speed of light squared. So it gives you a sense that this is an enormous amount of energy that gets released. And the beautiful thing about that is it means that there's a very small environmental impact to nuclear because we can create so much energy with so little input in terms of mining um, and even the power stations, even though they look large, you know, a single power station might provide 30 percent of the power to the province of Ontario. Uh, so where are the reactors in Canada? We have three large stations in Canada, each of which have between four and eight large Canada reactors. Um, there's also a reactor in New Brunswick, which is still operating. And we had a reactor in Quebec, which was operating as well. Um, our Canadian reactor technology has also been built across the world in places like Korea, uh, China, Romania, and Argentina. Yeah, I've certainly heard about that. How about the, the Candy reactor has been exported? Uh, it's a, it seems like a positive story for Canada. I want to just go back to the actual uranium itself. I heard a stat uh, years ago, probably about 20 years ago now, so I can't remember it exactly. I know you'll be able to help yeah. fill, fill it in, but it talked about a bundle of uranium pellets and, and how much energy they could produce. Could you give viewers a bit of an understanding as to just how much power there is from such a small amount of uranium? For sure. So I've, I don't have a fuel pellet with me, but I've got a battery here. This is about the size of two fuel pellets. Each fuel pellet of uranium is equal to about a ton of coal. And our candos use a fuel bundle, which is a collection of a whole bunch of these pellets and tubes. It looks it's about the size of a log you might put in your, your wood stove if you happen to live a bit more rurally. Um, now that, that log sized fuel bundle can power 100 homes uh, for one year. All the electricity needs of a country like Canada, where frankly we consume a lot of electricity, uh, are met um, again by that one fuel bundle, 100 homes for one year. So that gives you a sense of what we call the energy density of uranium. Um, Canada is blessed with the world's richest uranium ore deposits. Um, and our Canada reactor uses natural uranium without any enrichment. Um, so we have a real advantage in Canada uh, in terms of having complete energy security using this unique form of energy. 
We'll be back more to tap your brain into uh, what we can do with nuclear power in uh, the years ahead.